I just have a little message for the ladies today. If your man is building a bus or some kind of project like this, and at some point you start thinking, God, is he ever going to be done? I, I just can't wait for this to be done. I just want to tell you right now, he will never be done. There will always be something to add or change or upgrade, and it just goes on forever. So you guys know how I like gadgets. <laughs> and so I got a new gadget here. And the thing is, is that there is a fine line in your bus between level and clown house. <laughs> and so um, historically we've used uh, like those little Lego blocks. We've mentioned in the past little orange things are levelers and you put under your tires and stuff to level. But I wanted something that gave us a little more latitude as well as uh, quicker to set up, not so uh, wishy-washy. You know, you just don't know what you're gonna get. With something like this, you can fine tune. This is a scissor jack. Let's sh show you guys how this works. Your car probably comes with something similar to this and uh, you've probably never seen it, but <laughs> somewhere in your car you came with a jack and it's probably something like this, but not on this magnitude. Um, this is actually an RV leveling jack or trailer leveling jack, and this is rated for 7,500 pounds, so this is buff. But the, the unique thing about this is that it comes with the pieces you need. You can just hook it to a, a, uh, a drill so let me show you what we can do with this. That is so cool. Okay, that is super cool. And what that gives us is the ability to, within reason, reposition the axis of the bus. Now, we have four of these. And so the idea was to not necessarily, you know, lift the bus off the ground. I don't think we could. It, our bus is 2,000 pounds more than all four of these together would lift. And there might be some differences front to rear. But what we can do is relieve the suspension a little bit and lift the bus off, off the suspension slightly so that we can uh, front to back level as well as side to side level. So pretty exciting. Uh, Thing. addition yeah addition to the bus and mm -hmm. these weren't expensive it was like 80 bucks for two so for 160 bucks we came out with enough uh, levelers to you know to make a really big difference in our bus and this is kind of a great spot to try it in because we're we're not level side to side here natively parked and we're not level front to back here so it'll be interesting to see how much we can make up uh, using these things I haven't figured out a way to mount it to the back yet totally I have an idea and we're not going to do that today but we are going to try to mount these today in a spot ours is going to be a little unique um, only because this was already in place you may not have this you may have to mount yours to the frame or something like that but for us our fuel tank is massively reinforced and there's a spot near the edge of the bus here that is just super reinforced steel that I can mount this to and have the levelers out f further away from the center line. And it gives us more mechanical advantage to, you know, tilting the bus either way. So let's just do that. It always seems like we've always been more concerned about left to right than forward to back. And interestingly enough, it's actually, we could park this thing kind of across a slope and then use these just to bring it up to level if we wanted to. So that's, uh, that kind of gives us an advantage in a way. All right, so you see all these holes? Yeah. So we're gonna try to do these three holes and the same on the other side too. So I'm gonna have to drill six holes through this quarter inch steel in order to uh, accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Well, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, right? Good thing you got some big chainsaw batteries for your drill. That's right. <laughs> this is gonna be hard. I could probably do four. 
we're not going to be putting that much, like we're not going to use these to change the tire or anything. Right. So we will never have to worry about that. Basically, if I put one here, four of these, so it comes with everything. It comes with lots and lots of screws and there's enough for four on each side. Okay. Um, I'm going to use four total, but we're not using this to like lift the bus. We're literally using it just to nudge. So it's not putting that much pressure on it. Four of these gigantic uh, screws here, they're high they're steel screws, will uh, more than like hold this thing, hold it from falling off. It comes with a drill bit, it's 11 sixteenths. So we're gonna use this, hopefully it's a decent quality one. And uh, we're able to drill as many holes as necessary to mount this many um, things. Actually, I'm wrong. This is a total, the, the jack, it comes two jacks per pack, okay? And this came with eight screws, so we can only use four per, so that's good, okay, so. So what you were planning on using is how much there are yeah, provided exactly. anyway. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm putting in as many as so I should. So you were should. thinking right. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I guess the best way to do this is to uh, get this thing in place where I want it and just use the hole here as a guide to start my first hole and then uh, pull this thing out of the way and finish the hole. Once we get one of these things in and tight, then we can um, line up the rest of them uh, without worry of missing, an, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not trying to get the hole in exactly the right spot. This is just gonna be hard work. Like period, period, period. Because remember how we had to drill through the frame of the bus at one time? Yeah. I so that was had, like three eighths though. That we had the thick. drill press to help us. You're not going to have it this time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Already? <laughs> this is going to be hard. Yeah, it's just trying to like, it's like holding a weight up. Like for a long time, it's really hard. I wonder if I could use the scissor jack, actually. I know, that's what I was thinking. I might be able to. Just lift it up underneath there, right the, to the uh, perfect height. Where's the other drill? Is it out here? Uh, I don't I know. I know I brought it out with me or near the front door or something. Okay, let me look. On my furniture where it's not supposed to be. That's why I knew you would find it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're busted now, fella. Okay. What an interesting idea we just had here. Reminiscent of the old, good old days. I know. Bussy builds again. This is awesome. We we'll definitely get the pressure we need. <laughs> We're already through the first one, like way shorter than we expected. Yeah, this. I'm so glad we could use that jack. Yeah. That was epic. Some of you might have seen this in our early videos on the bus build, but I think it's actually in our intro, right? Where we're using, we're using a floor jack to press the drill up to mount our black water tanks and stuff like that underneath the bus. And I'll have you know, this was not Mike Guyver's idea. This was my idea originally to use the jack. Yeah, it was. This right? time I actually thought of doing this. Carrie mentioned like maybe we could use this and I was like, you know, I've been thinking about that because it was reminiscent of her idea using the floor jack. Yeah, totally. Which was epic, truly. Yeah. Ta -da, All right, is. so it works. Oh wow, it pulled the, there's a magnet here, it pulled it out. <laughs> uh -huh. So now that it's in place with one bolt, he's gonna use the drill to mark the location for the other three bolts. Yeah. New system, we're actually gonna put in the second bolt completely before we mark the last two places because it's wiggling around too much. You wanna use cutting oil when you're doing this. It's really important. This drill bit's designed to go through steel, 
but if you do not lubricate it it'll get extraordinarily hot and it'll change the temper of the steel of the built drill bit, drill bit and uh, it'll dull it real fast so if you don't do that you will definitely uh, be sorry and be buying a new drill bit too Go. So now it's held tightly in place. You can mark the other two holes on the other side. That's right. Very simply. Way quicker than we thought. We got all four of the holes drilled and some first through some pretty thick metal. So now they're actually able to just uh, go ahead and mount this. This is going much quicker than we thought. Yeah, it's great. So I'm just putting him in loose right now and leaving a little slack so that when I tighten them down, they're all in virtually in place. Just make sure you don't drill into your gas tank if you have the same thing here. <laughs> there it is. All right. You want to see how buff this thing is? Stand back and watch the watch this thing lift the bus. Or change the. There it is, stowed for uh, travel. Cool. So now all I gotta do when we get to our location, put it down like that, switch it to low here. Oh, you could totally see it lift the bus. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's only, the thing is, is there's a jack on the other side that's not mounted. So I'm literally trying to lift the bus right now. That's so, crazy, how cool. Yeah. It's... And there we are. Awesome. Now let's do it three more times. Actually, only one more time, because I don't have anything to mount this to back there yet. Oh, we're only doing the front two today? Yeah, we'll, we'll set the rear uh -huh. underneath the frame and try to take some weight off of the suspension back there. But we'll only be able to mount two today. Okay, gotcha. But this thing will not fall off, that's for sure. <laughs> like, it's buff. I'm stoked. That worked out so good. It doesn't. Look, it looks like it's part of the bus, really. It is. I mean, it is. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> When we first got these, I just threw them under here to see how they would work. And like, watch this. Like. Man, you I can could take see it. that. I could take that front tire off the ground right now if I wanted to. Those are some pretty tough little jacks. Yeah, so. They don't jack around. <laughs> It's the repetitive nature of this operation is what really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just over and over and over. Well, do it like this, do it like that. <laughs> Once again, having the right tools for the job, like a scissor jack, drill press, obviously. <laughs> it was like part of the part of the whole thing. You had to have that, obviously. Yeah. Spritz. It is perfect. All right, we're gonna have to clean up this metal down here. Maybe just brush it into a pile and then dust pan it well, out we of here. Use a magnet. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, get the magnet out and yeah, we'll clean it all up. Clean up, fleece up all this metal. The key to mounting these things is that you just want to do some loose ones first. Get into the thread. That's fine. Like that. Leave it loose. If you don't, you just never get anything else lined up. Like that, nice and loose. And then there's two of these I think I handed to you or lost. Yeah, I think lost is probably oh, right here. And then once you get all four of them in place, then you just tighten them all down. You start threading all four. That's number four. Now we can tighten them all up. And now we have two levelers mounted. 
Excellent. That how, was really quick. How cool is that? I can't believe how fast you got right, that. I'm just stoked. So easy. Okay, so now. I shouldn't use this one. I should use this one. You don't want to use a, uh, a uh, impact driver on this. You just want to use a, a regular. A regular drill? Yeah. Because an impact driver can damage the threads. Oh. So watch this. Like, we just put like two inches on this side. Like, it went up a lot. Yeah. There's like four inches right there. So, there we go. And there it is, stowed for driving. Okay, so now we've done that. I don't think we'll be able to mount the other ones. However, we can place them in the back and see what happens. Okay. Here. Yeah. Here's the second one. Uh, so they even come actually with a, a bolt template that you, it's a sticker. Who needs that? Uh, so it comes with the two jacks. It comes with a manual jack tool as well as all the screws and both tools one to put the screws in and one to operate the jack so like it's, this is a full a full thing it's so nice okay let's it's go the full monty it's the full monty <laughs> i don't know if these are tall enough to get all the way to the frame so here's some here's the deal there are some cardinal rules that I've learned since we've worked on this bus about frame, the frame of your bus. One of those Cardinals rules is you don't drill into the bottom of the top of the frame rail, you drill into the side of the frame rail, okay? But the actual logic behind this is a little bit different in that the frame itself is, um, that pertains to the center of the entire span because if you drill into if this is your c channel and you you drill into this this is part of the strength of the bus as it's being pressure here so if you drill into this you're weakening it okay if you drill in here this just holds this piece and this piece in place so over here it's, it, doesn't it's weaken it. it doesn't weaken it right but when you're talking about out at the ends out here, those rules don't apply because they're not load bearing out here. They're a tiny bit load bearing, but nothing of, of note. So you wouldn't be weakening the bus. So if I drill into this frame member here, which is actually separate from the actual frame, this is the, the engine frame member and it's mounted. Uh, uh, interesting. I'm not sure how, I don't know how it's uh, fastened. But if we could just take some weight off this engine, we can like literally take some pressure off the suspension back here just by lifting from here. So we're gonna see what happens when we put this on here and then get all jacked up. If it'll reach. No, <laughs> we're half inch short. Oh, a half inch away. <laughs> yeah. What do we have? Do we have like a two by four or anything like that? I don't think I have anything that I could put. Well, we could just put it right here. That's meant to take massive amounts of strength. We can, ah! we can certainly see what happens when we lift from this location here. Well, it's gonna have to be this away, this away.
Okay, I just watched your head go up. <laughs> or come down. Get yeah. Me. I can see the bus totally moving up and down. This is going to remove a lot of shake out of the bus for sure. Uh, oh, you have me that drove over there? This one? Are you laughing at me? <laughs> I keep getting messed up by your stupid flesh colored shorts. You're trying to check out my Johnson. <laughs> so Mike is wearing these flesh colored shorts underneath his coveralls and out of the corner of my eye, I keep catching a glimpse and thinking that he's naked under there. You're disgusted. <laughs> I don't know how much I took off the suspension there, but what we can do is do a little ball test, shall we? What? You don't have anything on under those. I need the breakaway. I can just go. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that this will solve is the side to side shake. Is the side to side shake. And that's something that we've noticed was way more dramatic than we ever would have known when the wind's blowing. We'll be at some place and we'll get these big gusts of winds and the, and the whole bus just shakes. Just totally shakes. So this will eliminate that completely. But using a little ball here, we can see. Well, that was anticlimactic. Wow. Like, even though it's slightly going to the back. So it's going this way and back. So since the ball was rolling towards this side of the bus, that's the downhill side. So I'm gonna jack up the bus just a little bit that way. And we'll do the ball test again. Just a little bit. Okay, let's go test it again. Yep, well, still going that way, just slightly. So let's jack it up just a tiny bit more. Okay, try it again. Now it's rolling to the other side in the back. So we can just dip it down just a slight bit. That's it. And then come over to this side. And all we're doing here is just, that's it. Stabilizing. Touching the ground. And now the bus is probably really level left to right. And, um, and the bus won't rock in the wind like ever again. Straight down the center of the bus. <laughs> What's our bubble level say? I think we're dead on. Is it? I don't have my glasses on. Oh yeah, we, that is dead on. So okay, cool. I installed it perfectly, but like we're more stable like now. Like there's just it does a, like a little shake, but it's not rocking on the suspension. Yeah, it didn't. Um, it didn't jingle the wind chimes as much that time as the first time you did it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll compare them back to back. I'll play the first time you shook and the oh, second you time you shook. Yeah. One of the things that this will solve is the side to side shake. Is the side to side shake. We're more stable like, now. Like there's just it does a, like a little shake, but it's not rocking on the suspension. Yeah. Wow, what a cool just like what is that? We've we been working on this for an hour. Yeah, what a now we simple have install. Built in stave on the bus already. Yeah. And now I just got to come up with that. I got so part two of this video, or possibly part one if I can find it, is I'm going to install the uh, rear where the rear ones are going to go, and um, they're probably just going to go in front of the tires on this side. I got a spot that I can run a piece of I beam all the way across, and then I could mount these jacks to it. And while that probably won't fix our front to rear very much, it could a little bit. What it will do is give us really good compensation for left to right. Cause like I said, like the, 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 it's a fine line in when you have a bus from like, you know, kind of level to clown house. Like if you, you can just adjust just a little bit and be 
out of the clown house environment into a very tall environment. If we can change the angle of the bus on both sides and create a really big lean if we need to, and then take the pressure off the suspension on the downhill side, um, that'll be awesome because then that really opens up a lot more places for us to park when we go different areas because sometimes we're parking and we're like, we can't, we can't level here and it's, well, we might tolerate it for an afternoon just because we're waiting for somebody to leave, but we're walking down the bus like this. And I'm telling you, in the middle of the night, when you get out of bed and you got to go pee and you're not going to turn on any lights, you know how to get down the you bus. You will hit the wall like every it is, time. It is clown house. Yeah. Fun house environment. It's so It's not weird. that bad during the daytime. You can compensate yeah. for it. But at night when you get up out of bed, you just fall. And in the morning <laughs> when you're kind of groggy, you're like, oh, I need some coffee. And you're coming out and you're just like. Yeah, totally oh, stumbling man. all over the and place. And it's so weird because it just it's only a little bit off but yeah. it's not a little bit off so this is great man i'm really stoked two great fixes in a week and now we have this we got to send a picture to red so shout out to red with the uh, bohemian bus odyssey red and frizzle um they uh he had the jacks on his bus and he, he hadn't mounted them yet but he had two that he used and it was really noticeable when i walked into his bus how stable it was and it was interesting when he came, and he's a bigger dude, you know, and he stepped into our bus and he was like, whoa, I'm not used to that, you know, because the bus really shakes, shakes yeah. and, and rocked as he came into the bus. And uh, it's really noticeable. Thanks, Red, for that pointer. These things, we bought the exact length that you sent to us. So thank you very much, because these were excellent, an excellent choice for us. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, and those, the link for those jacks is underneath the that bus tour video and we'll also link them again on this video right. so yes absolutely but thanks guys